Praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen. Uh, the Lord Jehovah, the God of heaven, has spoken with me about the highway of holiness, and that is what I want to share with your listeners today. Jehovah, again, the Lord, my shield, that is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 29. Jehovah Adonai, the Lord God, that you see in Genesis chapter 10 verse 2, Jehovah Kana, the Lord, the jealous God of Israel, Jehovah Hosea, the Lord, my Savior, Jehovah Rufe, the Lord, the He, Jehovah Ori, the Lord, my light, Jehovah Mephalti, my deliverer, Jehovah Hamelech, the great righteous king, Jehovah Hashofet Mishfat, in Hebrew for judge, the Lord, the righteous judge, he has spoken with me about the highway of holiness, and this is a very important message to the church, and those of you who are able to write down, you can write this, the church world over, Globally, regarding what the Lord is saying right now, regarding the church, concerning the church, appertaining to the church. Jehovah Nisi, my banner, I'm going to describe the conversation he engaged me in regarding the church, world over, globally. And then in that conversation, those of you can write, you can write as much as you can. Then after that, I'll explain to you, I'll give you the revelation for that conversation that took place, not this night, but the night before this one. Uh, in this tremendous conversation, the Lord takes me to a place, and He shows me the mission for which He sent me to the earth. He shows me how I was digging the soil, and I was using an equipment to dig through soil to create a road. So I could dig all the way and dig all the soil in a long distance, long distance, and stand. He stood me at one place so I could look back at the road I have made, the road I have made, but it's, it's maram, it's dirt, it's dirt from a distance, very long and plain. And then after that, I tarmacked that road. He gave me equipment and I began it. I was very busy. I was working and sweating and tarmacking the road until that road was so plain because the places that were deep, I covered. I filled them with gravel and rocks. And then the places that were raised, I mowed them. So it was really very plain. So I began to work very hard, sweating all across and tarmacking a very long highway, very, very long highway. This highway appears to have been going across the entire earth, but very straight, absolutely straight. So from where I was standing, Whenever I could reach a certain point, the Lord would make me look back. He would stop me and allow me to look back at how far the highway is and straight, straight highway. And this time around now from the dirt road, tarmacked, from digging through the dirt and making it plain, now I tarmacked it and I was sweating all over, sweating so much and tarmacking. So the tarmac was so plain, very pure and very straight, and very smooth, it was very clear. Then the Lord allowed me also to put the curbs. The curbs are those those things put at the edge of the road, at the end of the road. They're a little raising, they're raised maybe half a foot. So I was placing those curbs and cementing them very well. So the curbs on both sides of the road, they really marked the extremities, the ends of the road. And uh, so it's very powerful tarmac now, very long and very straight, absolutely extremely straight, that I could see very far from where I began. And it was so plain, very beautiful road. Then at one point, I began also now to paint the road. I was using white paint, and I marked, I marked the paint of the road so that you could see very clearly the different lanes very straight lanes, and I was marking paint, sweating, I was sweating all over, and marking the paint, marking the paint, 
marking out into white, white paint, very beautiful white paint that marked the road for the different lanes. So the white road, I can see almost, I don't know how many lanes, in my immediate eyes I could see three lanes that I've done. Maybe there are more I'm going to do on the other side. But the white road now, in terms of uh, its uh, capacity to take people. And then after that, then now the Lord Jehovah, he showed me a lot of people at that time, as I was walking with him now on this road, as I made the tarmac, then I saw a lot of people, a lot of people, no wonder I needed the three lanes, a lot of people that were Christians, Christians in the church, this church I'm talking about, this church, and they were marching, the way they were marching, it's as though I saw, that was amazing, because I saw the current type of marching that you see going on in Kenya, the processions we are holding today for the resurrection of Mama Rosa. Uh, it, says, it is well. Mungu we to. Meaning, it is well. Our God. Mungu wanabi. The God of the prophet. Ame Fufuwa has resurrected Mama Rosa. Mama Rosa. So that I saw the people, the large number that were marching, that kind of land, that kind of way of people, they were marching as though the procession I see going on to celebrate the resurrection of Mama Rosa. Walking on this highway, and I was in front, and the Lord was walking with me as the entire were marching, and when I look at the type of marching on this road, it shocked me very much because it appeared like the processions we're having in Nairobi, we're having in Nakuru, we're having in uh, Nanyuki, we're having in Kakamega, we're having in KC, in Keroka, Nyamira, in Bondo, in Kisumu, in Mombasa, Kwale, Kilisi. These processions we're having in Nyeri, everywhere, this South Burana, all these processions we're having around here, celebrating Mama Rosa with banners and placards, that is what it seemed like for those who were walking on the highway. So it really shocked me so much because it made me understand something very important that when the Lord sent me with his authority to overrule death, overrule death, and to bring resurrection, to resurrect, to raise, Mama Rosa from being a dead, rotting corpse. Until now, she's alive to death. She's alive. She's well, you know. So when the Lord did that, I'm now amazed that when this revival broke out and people are marching in procession in different towns of Kenya, celebrating the resurrection of Mama Rosa, I'm very shocked by this dream because this dream has opened my eyes, actually opened my eyes to reveal to me that this marching we are seeing in the streets, the church marching, this church, celebrating the resurrection of Mama Rosa, they are actually walking on the highway of the Lord headed to heaven. So that shocked me very much. That these processions, these celebrations as we walk, Mungu to it is well, the words of the mighty prophet of the Lord. So when people march, I have now understood it better from this conversation with Jehovah that when people are marching in the street, I did not know. So they are essentially walking on the highway of the Lord headed to heaven, the highway of holiness. All of them from different towns. So how about those who are not marching? And that's why at one point, when people are celebrating, I asked, I had a meeting there was a meeting of the Council of Bishops, and I invited in the Council of the Amicus Curiae, who were friends of that council, and some of them were professors. And I remember at one moment I asked the professors, I told them, I've been wondering, are the professors also marching with people celebrating Mungu Wei to eat his wealth? Mungu Wei to. Mungu Wanabi, are they also marching in the streets, the lawyers, the doctors, the professors? And then the, the, some of them, they told me, yes, it's, it's true, we are marching too. So that is so powerful because 
this marching in the streets, celebrating the resurrection of Mama Rosa, now I have a revelation from the Lord based on this conversation here, based on this dream, that that marching is essentially the church walking on the highway of holiness and headed to heaven, to the glorious kingdom of God. That shocked me very much. Now, within that dream, as now I am walking with the Lord and I see the church, they are following, they are following me as walking on this highway that I was digging and tarmacking and marking with the white paint. The Lord also walking with me there on my right hand side and as they followed in multitude, marching, walking into heaven, then the Lord showed me another way. The Lord now takes me exactly parallel to this highway, which is tarmac and beautiful, which I was making and sweating. Now parallel, as you see the way the highways are made, when you want to get to another, or maybe to the shopping centers, Sometimes there is a little ditch that looks like a drainage. So I could see that there's a bit of a drain, but it was a lot of grass have grown there and weeds and what. It was kind of bushy. But you could see very clearly that between the highway of the Lord, where people were marching, celebrating the resurrection power of Jehovah, resurrection of Mama Rosa, essentially now we know marching to heaven, now, there was another road, a road parallel also, but this was a road of dirt, a dirt road. And it was narrow, it was very, very narrow, and it's full of dust, and a lot of rocks, and what was not plain, and it ditches. It was a narrow path, I could say almost, uh, almost half a meter or so, half a meter in width. But some people were walking on that road, that's what shocked me. Some Christians, we are actually walking parallel, but on a dusty road. And I want to explain this very carefully. Now, that's the soil. The soil is reddish. Your reddish, your typical reddish soil. It is not tarmac. It is a dirt road with a lot of rocks and stones and what. And they were riding. I see some of them. The one who was leading them is riding a bicycle. Some of them are riding bicycles there. The ones leading them. On this other road, which is parallel the highway of the Lord. And this road had so much dust, so much dust and polvo, you know, to the extent there are these dirt roads where the dust becomes like flat, but red. So that if a vehicle were to pass there, or a bicycle, then you see a lot of dust, fumes of dust. So some people shocked me, some Christians, they were actually, the Lord showed me, they were walking parallel also, but on this other road, which is dirt, and made. It's not yet made. And it's full of a lot of grass and stones and what. And it was quite cumbersome to walk on that road. And as they were walking, there was one particular person on a bicycle that was leading them. As he was riding his bicycle, leading them, and other smaller bicycles also leading people walking there, as he was riding, we were on this side with the Lord, walking on this beautiful, tarmac and prepared road that is plain. But here there are these small little valleys and what, it has not been prepared this way. And they were walking and it was dusty road. No effort had been put there. This road was bad. So as they were walking parallel the highway of the Lord, then what amazed me is that as the highway of the Lord continues, this person who was leading them with a bicycle, all of a sudden, the Lord brings me at the point when he reaches a place where all of a sudden the Lord shows me how the road ends, that small path ends, and the ditch, almost two miles deep, two miles deep, it falls into a ditch, too. it's not a hole, because it's, it goes down two miles deep, and all that is deep all the way, so it's not even a hole. It's as if it falls into a sharp, vertical fall into a valley, a two-mile deep valley, and all that is deep like that. So he was riding, and he, people were following him, and he almost toppled over because he ran into that ditch, that hole, instant. He was not aware that the hole was there, the trap. And he almost toppled over. And I saw how he almost toppled, and he held back. 
Then when he held back like this, then from where I was on the highway of the Lord, the Lord asked me to rebuke them. My voice, the Lord Jehovah asked me to rebuke them. And I remember rebuking them, saying, look, how can you do that? You are going to die. Turn back, turn back, you are going to die. So they stopped at that point. He almost toppled over. The Lord made it about two miles deep. And it's not a hole. It is that much hole, but the entire of that region now is two miles deep. So you could say a big hole. As the other highway of the Lord continues though. And I remember that the person who almost toppled over, who was leading them on this other road, after hearing my rebuke, and I told them to reverse, to go back and find their way to this highway. So I was speaking to them from the other side now, from the highway of the Lord, with the Lord and the children of God marching on the other side. Then I remember they tried to reverse. They reversed, they reversed. But as they were reversing, I could see a lot of other women and uh, people, they mostly were women, lined up. They wanted to enter a house. They wanted to enter a house to see an apostate leader, apostate, apostate, someone who has fallen into apostasy. So I could see that lining of women also, but they were reversing anyhow. So really they were reversing now because they almost toppled over and died. And they reversed up to a place about, uh, let's say about uh, 10 meters like this. And they found a place where now, on the path they were, this dirty path, which is unmade with deep holes and what and rocks and everything. On their right now, there was a small path that connected. It looked like it would connect this path to the highway of the Lord so that they could make a connection and get back to the highway. Because I essentially told them to get back on the highway. So as I was standing there, I could see they were now preparing. But if you look at this ditch because the connection between the small this other fake road they were on and the highway of the lord which is tarmac is that ditch i was talking about there is now this drainage like ditch this is now like a drainage connecting it is as though when you are driving to nakuru or you're driving to a given place and there is a main highway and at the sides of the highway are shopping centers but in between the highway and the shopping centers there is normally a drainage ditch, something like that. However, this time it's in the kind of African setting where you have a lot of grass there. It is not made. That drainage is not made. So you have a lot of bushes and grass. But I could see that there is a path. There is now a path that connects those people that were lost on another highway. I was telling them to connect back to the highway of the Lord where everybody was so that they may come with us. So there is a path that connects now from their dirt road, which is unmade, to the highway of the Lord. And they could see that at that point, that path goes a little bit down through that drainage-like bushy path and connects to a place where the highway appeared to have opened the curb a little bit, like for drainage water to flow. However, I could also see that in going down a bit before they go up to enter the highway, there were some stairs, the steps that were made, which were made just simply taking a hole and digging, digging the soil. It's like that there were some steps. Even now I still see them. There are like two or three steps. So they were wondering with our bikes, with our bicycle, the leader was wondering, with my bicycle, how will I run down the bicycle on these stairs and go down this small ditch like this? The path I could see, even now I see the path. It was not straight connecting. It was wavering a little bit left like this and coming a little bit right and supposed to connect to the super highway, to the highway of the Lord. And in the process, what amazed me is that as they had seen the path, they were wondering how to ride the bicycle on the two, three steps, which were really soil. You just dig soil, you dig two levels and create the steps, the stairs. But as they were planning now to go, because you can see the path very clearly, that now can connect them to the highway of the Lord. However, as they were standing there with their leader, planning how to connect to the highway, then what amazed me is as though someone used some plants over there to make a fence, as if someone's homestead. Now at the bottom of that ditch, not a almost like a valley, which is like a drainage between the two highways, the separation between the two roads. One is this other road, 
The other one is the highway of the Lord. The separation, that drainage-like ditch. Actually, now this part that connects the two goes through this small little valley, but it's as though someone's homestead has used some plants to make a fence, but they were porous. There were big holes on the fence. I could see the holes on the fence as they were preparing to cross over now to join everybody else on the highway of the Lord, where the Lord was. And he is my atheist servant. And so, as they were planning to see how they can start with their bicycles, boom, 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 jump over, jump over the stairs, as all the other people on their feet would follow, then all of a sudden, on the left-hand side of that small path connecting them to the highway, is this, which looks like a homestead, someone used some plants to make a fence, and they were pour out the big holes within the plant fences. And all of a sudden, I heard some beasts. There were some serious beasts inside there within those big holes, those porous breaches of that fence-like, or if you will, as though someone's homestead. So there were beasts actually waiting for them on this path to ensure they don't get on the highway of the Lord. Serious beasts. They were very ferocious. They were really roaring and opening their teeth. I could see. So there was this dilemma now. I have called them. I told them, what are you doing? How can you walk on that highway? How did you branch? Why did you branch to take another road? This is the highway of the Lord. So as the Lord asked me to rebuke them and ask them to reverse back and come, now they cannot join the highway because there are beasts waiting for them in this little ditch. This little valley-like ditch, or drainage, if you will, the path passes there. But there are beasts waiting to devour them, meaning stopping them, cannot allow them to join the highway of the Lord. And so, I began again to ask them to go further. They were contemplating now how to return all the way back on the highway up to the place where they detoured from where they branched from and left us going on the highway of the Lord as they branched onto this other road, fake road, the road that leads to death, the road that they almost plunged into two miles deep hole. So I saw they were worried. They were saying, but if we reverse all the way, they had to go. They had to go. Because here now they are beasts that will not allow them to enter the highway of the Lord. So they had really to make their way to try to think about it. I saw them stopping there. They were standing there. They were really astounded. They were caught up in a situation where they were contemplating. They were asking themselves, how do we do this? But if we go back, they were saying, if we go back to where we detoured from, where we left the people of the Lord walking on the highway of the Lord and took this other road, it will be too late. These people on the highway of the Lord will have gone so far and probably reached. So the Lord makes me hear the contemplation of their hearts, the discussion and the debates, the deliberations of their minds as they now wondered, how do we get back on the highway of the Lord? And then after that, I woke up. So I want to talk to the church world over, though I know that Senior Archbishop Lucinda will speak to a specific people regarding this conversation, I already began this conversation with specific people at the Nakuru main altar, but this conversation repeats itself. It appertains to the whole church world over globally. Though I know that Senior Archbishop Litunda will be able to address certain people on this matter that I began to conversation with at Nakuru main altar after midnight yesterday, the groups that were repenting on this matter. However, this conversation repeats itself world over over in the entire body of Christ. In fact, if you look at the body of Christ globally now, you can see that there are two ways. There is the highway of the Lord, and there is another way that the church has followed. And the majority of the church has followed this other way. The Bible is very clear. I'm going to begin by reading the book of Isaiah 35. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah 35 verses 8 and verse 9. And Isaiah 35, verses 8 to verse 9, I'm going to read regarding the highway of the Lord and then give you the revelation 
on this conversation, what really the Lord is saying. He says, let me begin by reading Amplified. He says, and the highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean will not pass over it, but it shall be for the redeemed, the wayfaring men, yes, the simple ones, yes, the simple ones and the fools shall not err on it and lose their way. And he says, verse 9, No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk on it. That is the Amplified. When I read now the King James, he says, And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the way faring men, though fools, shall not err therein. Verse 9 it says, No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go upon thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. The New American Standard says, And the highway shall be there, a roadway, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean will not travel on it, but it will be for him who walks that way. And fools will not wander on it. No lion will be there, nor any vicious beast go up on it. These will not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. If you look at the NIV, the New International Standard Version, it says, and the highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way, capital W, that way, meaning a lifestyle, those who lead that lifestyle. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ferocious beast will go up on it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. So this is very powerful, beloved people. Because the Lord has spoken in a very profound way to the current church, to the present body of Christ. And I know, like I said yesterday, I was handling this matter up to midnight at the Nakur main altar with a specific group of people. But this event of walking on another way keeps repeating itself ever since the inception of the church at the cross. And it has gotten worse in this grand finale, even before the coming of the Messiah. But when you look at the Church of Christ world over, you see as though they have two different benchmarks. You see as though this church that the Lord sent me to establish and speak to for Him, this church upholds a certain standard of righteousness, a certain standard of holiness, and there is zero tolerance to sin, and the person of the Holy Spirit is enabling them, is helping them, is facilitating them to observe the righteous and holy standards of God that you see established in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, where it says, For without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. In other words, nobody will enter the glorious kingdom of the Messiah, the glorious kingdom of Jehovah the Father the glorious kingdom of heaven, the holy glorious kingdom of God. But you see very clearly in the scripture I've read, you see that this scripture that the Lord has allowed me to read today is the scripture that perfectly describes this massive conversation the Lord had with me 48 hours ago. These two roads. Because this scripture says, 
and the highway will be there. Meaning, there will not be two ways. That's what the Lord is saying. It will be only one way. And the highway will be there. And he says, that one way, if you hear the way he describes it, in Isaiah chapter 35, verses 8 and 9 that I have just read, he talks about a way that is really cast up. It is elevated. It's exalted. It is raised above all. Which means you cannot compare. There is no comparison between the highway of the Lord and any other road. And you can see he talks about how exalted this highway, well made, well planned, well taken care of, and well set for the Lord. The King is coming. The King is coming to pass on this highway. It is well prepared. So when you see the book of Isaiah 35 of read, he talks about only one highway. So he's saying essentially that there are not two ways. There's only one highway that leads to this glorious kingdom of God. And this highway is elevated, it is raised, it's above all the other, it's lofty, it's exalted highway. And when you follow very carefully in this conversation that the Lord had with me this past night, and in the context of the scripture I have just read, then you see that principally the Lord sent me to prepare this highway for the Lord, for the coming of the Messiah. But you see principally from this scripture, this highway is Christ Jesus, the Messiah. Meaning, when the Lord sent me here across the earth, when the Lord brought me from his throne home to the earth to prepare the highway of the Lord, he essentially sent me to come and reestablish, reestablish the authority of the blood and the cross and to ask the church, to return to the original gospel of holiness, to the original salvation of righteousness. In other words, to lead the church, to point the church back to Christ Jesus, the Holy Son of God. In other words, he's saying this highway he sent me to point the church to, to lead them to, is principally Christ Jesus, the Messiah himself. So you can tell right away, that there is a big misconception about Christ Jesus, the Messiah. And many times I've said that the decaying, the, the, the putrefying apostasy in the church has essentially lowered, it has attempted to lower the benchmark of God on righteousness and holiness, but that is not self-sustaining. That is untenable this day I am speaking. When the kingdom of God has drawn nigh, has drawn near. We see very clearly that if there is one thing about God that never changes, it is the holiness of God. It is the righteousness of God. And he's saying that over the millennia, from the extremes, the ends, from the eternities of the eternities, through this day when I'm conversationing with you, to the eternities of the eternities to come, if there is one thing about our God, Jehovah, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Bara, Jehovah Chevez, Jehovah Eli, Jehovah Elion, Jehovah Miskabi, Jehovah Mephalti, Jehovah Rofi, Jehovah Ori, Jehovah Seli, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Kabodi, Jehovah Goel, Jehovah Aosheah, Jehovah Ashopet, Jehovah Amelek. Jehovah Imeku, one thing about the Lord Jehovah El Gibor, Jehovah El Olam, the God of Israel worship, Jehovah Sabaoth, is that he is holy. One thing that changes not about him is the holiness of God. And I have taught this world over across the continents of the earth in this process of restoring the church that if there is anything that does not change about the salvation of Christ that we worship, that we confess and profess, is the holiness of God, the God we worship, and the difference between us and all other idol religions of this world is that for us, we worship a holy God whose name is Jehovah, the God of Israel. And in that very context thereof, 
then you see very clearly that by sending me, the Lord is essentially saying that go and remind the church world over that the standard of righteousness you see, the standard of holiness you see in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 does not change, will not change. Then you ask yourself then, then what is the role of the dispensation, the grace, the covenant of the grace, and the role of the Holy Spirit, because many times they are asserting, they are affirming of holiness. The holiness of God has been essentially misconstrued by the present day church to mean the returning of the church. That when you emphasize the holiness of God, you are essentially pushing them back to the dispensation of the law. But you need to be very careful world over the church that when the Lord Jehovah, he brought the law, the law, and he brought the law of the new covenant, he put them together, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and the new covenant, and he gave you a Bible. So the Lord is essentially saying, if you read scriptures like Hebrews chapter 10, 26, 31, if you read Second Peter chapter 2, 19, 22, and you read Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6, you see the warning on the abuse of the grace. He fact, up to a place and a point where he warns and he says, if anyone who broke the law of Moses died without mercy at the testimony of two or three witnesses, how much more severely then do you expect a man to be judged who was treated as an holy thing? How more superior? You see, in that warning about the scriptures I mentioned, in that warning about the abuse of the grace, you see the Lord comes out very clearly to raise the superiority of the new covenant of grace. The, covenant, the sovereign grace. The covenant of the sovereign grace that Christ Jesus brought to the church. And he comes out very, very clearly to tell the present day church that look, while it was the sacrifice and the blood of an animal that did atonement for one year, 12 months, for the sins of the people, but on this other side, in this case now, the covenant of the sovereign grace of God that was unleashed, that was given, rewarded to the nations, is now a more superior covenant because it is by the blood of the Son of the living God himself. And that's why it's very important we understand that in as much as people sometimes shy away from pursuing holiness and pursue this modernism, the theology of modernism, the notions and the theories and philosophies and principles of modern Christianity that become so porous on matters of holiness, now the Lord is saying, as the Messiah is about to come, as he has sent me, that the benchmark of holiness will not change on that day. So then you ask yourself, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? I have taught it world over in all the continents. I have said that when the person of the Holy Spirit comes to the church, Holy, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, He comes to reveal more and more of the person of Christ to the church. And the more and more the Holy Spirit reveals the person of Christ to the church, the more and more you begin to understand He is actually revealing the holiness of Christ and more of the holiness of Christ to the church. So the Holy Spirit essentially comes to facilitate the church to pursue holiness that they too now may be able to worship in spirit and in truth. He's saying essentially that the God we worship is very holy and therefore he demands of those that worship him to be holy. That is not something to be debated, something to take if you wish or if you want. That is mandatory. That is the difference between our Christian salvation that Christ Jesus the Messiah brought us and other religions which are essentially false religions, they are actually fake, those religions are idol worship. And that's why it brings me back to this very important issue that came up today, truth, that this highway the Lord was showing me, 
that I was leading the church through, which I had prepared, I was made for through. This is Christ himself. Because only by Christ can people, mankind, reach the eternal, glorious kingdom of God. So that now essentially takes me to the book of John chapter 14. And I'm reading John chapter 14, verse 6. And this is what he says. If you read verse 1, he talks about the rapture of the church. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Verse 1. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will be back. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. So that is John 14, verses 1 to 3. He talks about the destination. He talks about the destination of the church, the destination of our salvation, the destination of this Christian walk. The destination of this highway that he showed me in the dream. In this tremendous dream, the highway that where people are walking celebrating the resurrection of Mama Rosa. And it shocked me very much that now when people are testing, doing procession across the streets of Mungu Wetu, it is well. Mungu Wetu, it is well. Our God, the God of the mighty prophet, has resurrected Mama Rosa from a dead decomposing corpse. Now she's awake. Now she can eat. Now she can sit. Now she can talk. Now she can walk. This celebration, the Lord has shocked me so much, essentially opening my eyes to make me know it is the church walking on the highway of holiness to the eternal kingdom of God. That is amazing. But he's saying here that this highway is Christ himself. And before I read the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, that talks about this highway, that is principally Christ the Messiah, my Lord himself, the Redeemer. Before I get there, I just wanted to read 1 and 2, John 14, 1 and 2, where he talks about the rapture of the church, the entry of the church into heaven, essentially exalting the destination of the Christian walk the destination of the Christian salvation, the destination of this highway that he sent me to prepare, the destination of this highway showed me in the dream where the Holy Church was walking and they were dressed holy. John 14, 1 to 3. Can you go now to John 14, verse 6? He says the following. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. That is a powerful situation, beloved people, because now we are beginning to understand even deeper the meaning and revelation of this tremendous dream the Lord engaged me in for the church at this hour, 48 hours ago. So he's saying essentially that this highway where I was walking and leading the church to is Christ Jesus, the Messiah himself. So you see that essentially the mission of he that speaks with you is defined right there. Meaning to direct them, to lead them to Christ Jesus, the Messiah. He that is the only way to God the Father, to Jehovah Adonai. And you see, that brings up a lot of very powerful aspects on that walk, because he's saying that Christ Jesus indeed is the way, qualifies to be that way, and is that way, and qualified to be that way already, out of the following, out of his tremendous beholding of our salvation. Because only Christ Jesus beholds the salvation of humanity. The salvation of mankind. Only Christ Jesus 
indeed does behold the salvation of mankind. And that only the salvation of Christ Jesus will lead humankind, mankind, man, to the glorious eternal kingdom of God. So he really is that way. And he says, and nobody gets to the Father, nobody gets to the glorious kingdom of God, except through me, Christ Jesus, he says. And he does so because he is beholding our salvation. He is the one that brought us salvation. How? By the tremendous obedience that he displayed when he accepted to go and suffer and sacrifice himself on the cross for the church, for humanity, for the nation, for this world, that he may atone for their sins, even generations not yet born. It is so powerful, therefore, that in this entire conversation, the destination is focused on that Christ Jesus, he is that way, leading where? To the Father, to God the Father. And I know really, really, that nobody ever wants at all, Christian or not, Christian or not, I have not yet met anybody that says, look, I want to go to hell. I want to go to internal fire, inferno. And let me raise this a little notch higher. I have never met any church, any Christian, any follower of Christ that says, I am a Christian because I want to go to hell, because I want to fall into that ditch you saw. And that's why this conversation becomes very critical. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way to the Father. I am the way to the kingdom of heaven, to the kingdom of God. So essentially, he that speaks with you has been sent to point the nation to the way, to Christ Jesus, who is the way, but also in the process to undergo the do's and the don't do's. He's saying that Christ Jesus, he afforded us through the sovereign grace of God, he afforded us the sovereign grace of God through a serious, extreme act of obedience and sacrifice. That he became so obedient to the Father, even willing to die, to sacrifice himself, the King of glory, sacrifice himself on the cross for the sake of sinful men, that they too now may be imputed upon. By imputation now, it may be accredited to them, those that have faith in him and obey him, those who are in Christ Jesus, that they too may enter now the eternal glorious kingdom of the Father, of God the Father, the Lord God, Jehovah Eli, the Lord my God. And he's saying the focus of this highway the de is the destination, which is heaven. The destination is heaven. And he's saying that Christ Jesus, by sacrificing himself in an extreme act of obedience on the cross, he essentially opened this way to mankind that they too may be partakers, they may partake of the blessings of the covenant of grace, which is the eternity with God. But that eternity with God brings about the righteousness of God into the church. And that's where the problem is today. The holiness of God in the church. And that's where the problem is today. Look, he has not wavered the holiness of God unto the church that enjoys the sovereign grace of God. So holiness and righteousness become more ingrained. They become more inculcated, more inbuilt into the church that was walking the high way of God with the Lord, the Holy Spirit and the Father. It is the kingdom of the Father. And he's saying that the highway that is Christ Jesus is so highly exalted, more than this other road where they almost fell into a ditch, into hell, where the man of God had to stop them and tell them, no, how could you do that? Get back, return now, and join us on this other highway. How could you walk on another way when the voice is so clear? And he's saying that Christ Jesus afforded the church the opportunity, afforded humanity and mankind the opportunity to get onto this highway of holiness 
that leads to heaven. How? By he himself being very obedient to the Father, and then the Father thereof gave him the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the authority to defeat death on the cross for the church. Hallelujah. That all into the fact that Christ the Redeemer defeated death on the cross, now he is this highway that will be able to facilitate, to help the church to also defeat death and see the eternal glorious kingdom of eternity, of Jehovah, of the Lord, of the God of Israel, and enter the new Jerusalem. And he's saying, by that sovereign grace, now the Messiah afforded the Gentiles and the Jews alike, in equal measure, to walk on this highway and see the eternal kingdom of God. This is what deemed sinners. This is what allows every sinner even to go back, those that were walking on the other highway. But now look, if you go so far on the other fake highway, the fake path, but what do you end up with? Eternal death. And you reach a place where there are ferocious beasts that would not want you to cross back to the highway of the Lord. That we have seen in the church today, and we see world over. That the enemy now begins to claim certain people that he deluded, he deceived to walk on another way. And when he says this highway shall be built, where does it pass through? He says in the desert, meaning places where the gospel of the sovereign grace of God have not reached, where the gospel had not reached, meaning this is the hour when the gospel is now reaching the unreached the extremities of the earth, the forgotten, they are given a chance now to come on board, to come right on board on this highway. This highway of the Lord, again, I want to raise this before you, is so exalted. Why? Because it's different from the dark road, the miry road, those roads of sin of this world, the dark roads of the sin of this world, where many churches are walking today, the road that I saw the Christians walk on parallel. What amazed me, that road is parallel, but comes to a fatality, comes to a sudden end, does not reach heaven, beloved people. That shocked me quite a great deal, beloved people. And he says that this highway of holiness is Christ Jesus, because of the perfection of Christ Jesus, he has perfected holiness, and in that sovereign grace of God, he sacrificed himself in that process of obedience and in so doing accepted us. So all the church of Christ needs to know is that even as you enjoy the grace, he has not wavered holiness. That's why there is a church that will go to a hell. If you read the Bible, Matthew 25, you see two churches there, Matthew 1 to 13. You see, the wise church, meaning walking the fear of God, meaning obeying Christ, emulating the obedience that Christ displayed, exuded before the Father on the cross, that they now, through the help of the Holy Spirit, are also obedient to the benchmarks, the requirements of being a Christ follower. And he says, be holy, for I am holy. That scripture still stands. And he says, the Holy Spirit... Now, only helps us, facilitates us to be able to observe holiness with ease now. That he may help us now to emulate the holiness of Christ. And he did that again, like I said, by sacrifice, obedience, and by his blood. And the Spirit of the Lord now sanctifies, justifies those that choose holiness and pursue the righteous way. But what does he mean in the same scripture that I read in Isaiah chapter 35, verses 8 and 9, when he says, The unclean shall not sojourn, shall not journey on it. Let us read, beloved people, the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, and see what he means there. Revelation 21, 27. What does he mean 
when he says the unclean will not journey there. Here he speaks very clearly and beautifully about the glorious kingdom of God and the way to that kingdom. And he says, verse 26, if you said, he says, the glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into it, that city. And then he goes on 27 say, nothing impure will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you see that as you walk on this highway, the highway of the Lord that the Lord showed me 48 hours ago in a tremendous dream, and some other Christians were walking another way, which appears to be parallel, is very deceptive. The enemy has put that way to deceive you that you are going on the same way. And what amazed me most in this dream that the Lord gave me 48 hours ago, beloved people, what amazed me most about this dream is that both those who were on the highway where I was walking with the Lord and they were marching towards the glorious kingdom of eternity and those who were on this other deceptive fake counterfeit road which essentially is the broad road, broad in the sense spiritual, in the sense that everything is acceptable there, living large, you can do anything and get away. It's not constrained spiritually. Hallelujah. This other highway where I was walking, where people are observing holiness, is actually constrained, restricted in certain things, and the Holy Spirit facilitates you to see the treasure and the eternal, immeasurable reward, recompense, benefit of righteousness, of walking in a constrained way. So when he says a narrow way, it does not mean a physical narrow. It is very spiritual, but brings about the realization of the physical constraints. Meaning you may not go to movies with people, you will not drink alcohol, you will not watch pornography. You will not dress in certain ways. That we now know. But what amazes me so much is that now, when I read Revelation 21, 27, he seems to define that there are only certain people that will walk this highway of holiness. Because he says, wicked fools will not be there. But if you read King James, it's very powerful. Because King James says the following. King James mentioned that even fools will not err on that road. They will not error. They will not commit mistakes on this highway of the Lord. Let me explain this to you very clearly. He's saying, in other words, if you read the King James Version, or Amplified, he is essentially saying that the highway of the Lord is very, very clear. Nobody can ever claim that they cannot see it. It is plainly put. The gospel of the grace is very plain, and you don't have to be educated, or to be who, or rich, or what, or mighty, to see the grace that he has laid before us. And that's why in King James he says, not even a fool can error, can make an error on this highway. However, now when you read Revelation 21, 27, defining the people that will enter the destination, that will arrive there having walked this highway of the Lord, then you hear the following. You now hear him saying that there is a certain type that will not be there. The deceitful, the shameful, those committing abominations, those committing blasphemy. And when you look at the church of Christ world over today, you see that there is a whole large church, the large way, the highway that he talks about, which is the wide way that leads to death. There is a larger body of Christ, the majority right now, that have accommodated sin. It is as though to them, they are saying that no matter which way you follow, which lifestyle you follow today, you will still enter heaven. But Excuse me, I have breaking news for you. I'm sorry. I have some sad news for you that when you follow that broad way of living, of Christianity, 
where everything goes, where women dress immoral, where the gospel of prosperity is preached, where there is no fear of God, that road, I have seen it. The Lord showed it to me 48 hours ago. It comes to a sudden end without notice, and you topple over into hell. And the other thing also that he showed me yesterday in that dream is that you reach a point whereby if you are walking on the other way where every sin is acceptable, the way that has not been prepared by the Holy Spirit and He who speaks with you, when you walk the other way, He says, you reach a place where it is irreversible. You almost become irredeemable. Why? Because those are the committers of iniquity. Where perpetual sin is now a lifestyle of the church. And you see that church all over. You switch on your Christian television, you see that church. You see there are false prophets there. There are false apostles there. There are fake miracles there. There are fake gospel there. There are sinful tolerance. There are tolerant sin. And yet he told us that there is only one highway that is Christ Jesus who is holy and the Holy Spirit comes to facilitate the church to observe that holiness. Why? Because that holiness is not wavered. But now, in Revelation 21-27, he defines those that go there. Those that go on the highway that is Christ Jesus and arrive into the New Jerusalem. That's amazing to me. Why? Because he seems to be alluding to those I see in the book of Isaiah 35 before we get to the highway. Isaiah 35 verses 5 to 6. Let's see who they are. And turn with me to Isaiah 35, verses now 5 to 6. And this is what he says now. Isaiah 35, 5 to 6. Isaiah 35, verse 5, he says, They will, that will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. He's saying that only those that will walk the highway of the Lord are those who are blind, and then by the sovereign grace, the sovereign grace of our Lord Jesus, their eyes opened, and now they could see the things of eternity. Now they could, in this life, see the things of God and appreciate them. But those that were Christians and walking on the other road full of sin and muddy, muddy, dusty, that red soil, dusty, that is essentially sin. Sexual sin, actually. Those who are in church and walking the other way, the broad road that the Bible describes as wide is the gate, broad is the road, everything acceptable there. He says, for them, they have retained their unregenerated nature. They have not been regenerated unto the grace, unto salvation. They have retained their sinful nature. They have not changed. They have remained blind. So they cannot appreciate the holiness of God and the treasures of eternity for which they should tread off for which they should abandon all these so-called pleasures and the goodies and the trappings of the world for the sake of the treasures of eternity. But the blind whose eyes were opened by the gospel of the sovereign grace, walking with God towards heaven, on the highway of the Lord, with he that speaks with you, towards the kingdom of glory, they have their eyes open and now can see and appreciate the things of eternity. And give up everything for it. Verse 35, chapter 35, verse 6, he goes on to say, Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Meaning, those people that will be able to walk this highway and reach the destination of eternity, they are those now whose blind eyes opened can see and appreciate the things of God, can see the glory of God and say, wow, I can't give this. I can't trade off this. I cannot, for this, I can give up everything. And he's saying that when they were deaf, their ears were opened. Those that enter eternity on this highway that I saw myself walking with the Lord 
and leading them as they celebrated into eternity. Meaning, while their ears were deaf, now their ears are open, and they are able to hear the voice of God, they are able to hear the voice of the shepherd, the Messiah, they are able to hear the voice of this servant saying, this is the way, follow it. This is the way of holiness, follow it. Meaning, while they were deaf, now they can hear and follow it. But the other church that walks on another way, meaning they have retained their unregenerated, undelivered nature. So remain blind, cannot see the things of eternity, remain dead, cannot hear the voice that is instructing. This is the way. Follow it. They can't hear the voice of the Lord. So they become the wicked fool, unregenerated, sinful nature retained, and they shall always make error. But he's saying those that walk this highway of holiness, that is Jesus, the Messiah, they cannot error. Why? Because he says the salvation of Christ is so plain, it's so clear, you don't need to be educated to see it and follow it. So this is the conversation the Lord had with me about the Church of Christ and eternity on whose verge we are sitting at this hour. This is he about whom the scripture spoke. I have seen the coming of the Messiah. Please prepare the way. Turn away from sin and be holy. Change your ways, for the kingdom of God is near. I've seen the Messiah come and take the church. Shalom. Thank you.